I'm Julia, and this is how I accidentally became a successful musician. Um, what I'm going to try and do is outline the general rules that I live by and how they worked out for me. So step one is boredom. Um, if you're like not happy doing what you're currently doing, bored of it or whatever else, find something else to do. Find another outlet and become really, really good at it. Do it all the time. Um, and then, if you can, release that thing that you've obsessed about to the world. For me, it was music videos. Of generally awful songs that I turned into uh, other versions. That was the classic 303's Don't Trust Me. My grandma was in my house while I was recording that. Um, step two, involve other people. Um, find a community. For me, there just happened to be four years ago a group of people that were becoming really, really into the ukulele. And so when they would put ukulele into the search bar to find something that they were into, they would find me. Um, because I had been obsessing about making these videos. I had like five or six of them up and I was putting them up every couple of weeks. And so those people became my people and they were checking back in and telling me what they thought. And um, as I got more opinions and like the comment section on YouTube kind of just serves as like the most honest reaction you will ever receive. People don't hold back on YouTube. Um, so I did mold the things that I was doing to make um, other people happy, but myself happy at the same time. Um, and then like, as long as you're doing something that you like and you are like taking other human beings into consideration while you're doing it, you just sit and wait um, for that like big break. And I put that in quotes because it's not really big. It's never really like big. You don't just like have one thing and say, my life is different now. Because that's not going to happen. It's going to be like a lot of little things. Um, a big part of, of discovering whether or not you've had a break is reading your emails, making yourself available and making sure that people can let you know that you have a big break coming up. Um, and then picking and choosing which of those emails and offers are going to be okay for you. One of the first things that I was offered, um, it was like a couple months into doing videos, was the Bushman World Ukulele Competition. And it came to me in the most professional form, a YouTube message that said, hey, we're doing a contest. If you win, um, you get a free ukulele. And because I had already been obsessing about this whole video ukulele thing, like this was so perfect for me. So I actually made two videos and I like freaked out about it. I spent like days on these things. Like I said, it's important to be obsessed with the thing that you're doing. Um, and then I won and I got a free ukulele and the first thing that anyone ever in my life paid me to come play music at was this luau. Um, it was held in a barn. It was kind of weird. It was not as well put together as XOXO. <laughs> and um, it was kind of the thing where I was like, man, if you had asked me two weeks ago, I'd be flying to a ukulele luau. My life has come so far. <laughs> And that's what I mean by big break. Like, it feels big when something happens to you, but that's not the end of breaks. Every scratch on this guitar is because of you. Um, I was mostly doing covers on YouTube and uh, going back to, like, listening to your audience and fine-tuning things. Someone insisted that I do an original song because um, they really wanted to hear the inner workings of my brain. And so I did, and the next morning I woke up and 
uh, I had had YouTube attached to my email. Anytime I got a comment or someone subscribed to my videos, I got an email and I woke up and uh, my email was 100% capacity. I couldn't, there was like 100,000 emails that had come in overnight. And I found that that was because with original content, YouTube put my video on the front page. And so if anyone, this is, they don't do this anymore, which is dumb, but um, if you went to youtube.com, there would be like three videos there and lots of people were going to youtube.com and of the three videos, blonde haired blue chick, blonde hair, blue eyed chick, they just clicked that one. So I just got like a bazillion people looking at me. And like I said, YouTube comments are like really honest. <laughs> um, so this was definitely a big break and I hated it so much. It was the worst. I was the saddest person. I had a nose ring at the time. YouTube didn't like that. Um, so I think like th this is a tangent and we can talk about it later if you guys want to, but the, there will be crappy things that will happen to you when success happens to you. There will always be a downside, but that doesn't mean that the upside isn't worth it because the next huge thing to happen to me was opening for Ben Folds just like my absolute favorite musician ever in the whole entire world messaged me on MySpace. And um, there's actually kind of a longer story. I, um, he had a YouTube channel and he put up a video that prompted acapella groups to come make videos of them covering his songs and he was gonna choose one of those acapella groups to open for him. And so I made a video of uh, his song, Gone, and prompted it by saying like, I am not a group, and I am clearly not a cappella, but I really wanna open for you, so here's my video. And I recorded the whole thing, and I edited it all together, and then I went back to see where I could post it, and it was gone. He had taken down his video, there was no more contest, it was like it never existed. And I was just like, oh, crap. <laughs> well, I guess I will take that out and post it anyway. And when I did that, a couple days later, I got the message that in my MySpace inbox that said, um, open for Ben Folds. And I was like, ah, the contest is back. But I can't submit, I just already lost cause. So I didn't um, respond. <laughs> didn't even open it. Um, I eventually got a call from my mom Because uh, we had a, a record label. Uh, my mom just called it a record label. It's not a record label. It's me and my mom. And uh, she would list it. It was like before online shopping was super easy. So we would have people call in with their credit cards. And that's how they could buy my CD. So we had the record label line. It was just my parents' landline number. And I guess... Ben Fold's manager called and was like, Julia is ignoring Ben. <laughs> and then I got like a very awesome and then slightly angry call from my mom. She was like, why are you ignoring Ben Folds? <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, mom. Sorry, Ben. What I'm trying to say is, what? what? I'm trying to tell you it's not This is me and Ben. Yeah, it was cool. Um, and after that happened, I decided that I really wanted to record a better CD than the one I had um, because I was starting to get known for all of these like multi-layer videos with harmonies and stuff and the only CD I had was just me alone in a room with a guitar 
So I didn't even have a ukulele on it, and I was like, oh, this needs to, need to fix that. So with zero money, I didn't know what to do. Um, and luckily for me, I was at college with a bunch of people that were willing to help, and musicians, and a guy with a barn that used to be a brewery, and a couple microphones. And that's how I made an album that, in my opinion, is like kind of really bad. But uh, because I had built this like really loyal fan base and I felt so connected to all of my fans, they liked it anyway. <laughs> and I think that that's something really important that I'm trying to drive home here is you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be putting out the most polished things, you just have to work with what you have even if it's zero money and just some nice people that want to help you, it can still work out. It's still going to be all right. Another big break that I think I am talking about mostly because it did nothing, it's one of those things where I thought, like, this is going to be huge and my life will forever be crazy and no nothing happened from it. It was this like huge deal that some slick talking person was like, hey, this is gonna make you a star, kid. And I believed him. And uh, I went to San Francisco and participated in YouTube Live. They wanted to put um, famous people and YouTube people in the same room and have them all perform and be like, see, they're all alike, but we're not alike. We are not alike at all. Katy Perry was there and she had like a band of drag queens in full makeup. And I was there in a cardigan. <laughs> it was so dumb. Uh, but also I just really wanted to point out that that's MC Hammer. <laughs> and we have the same hat. Um, this is another example of just like using your resources. I had never gone on tour in the USA, but my sister lived in England, so she's super organized and, and booked a tour for me. So before I toured America without Ben Folds, I toured England. Um, and that's just like reaching out to people that you have in your life to see how they can help you. Don't put it that way but do it. Um, the next big break was actually huge. It was um, an intern at the company that books Bonnaroo had been given the task of finding a really small band to fill up like seven or eight small show spots all around the festival, like basically filling up time. And she found me on YouTube. Um, mostly because I am all over YouTube. I make myself like incredibly easy to find. If you spell my name wrong, I still come up. And it's because I have this like volume of things. Um, and I think that like, if you wanna make sure someone could find you and you're a graphic designer, make one thing searchable that anytime someone's like, ah, what is that guy or girl? they can put that one thing in and they will find you again. For me, it was like blonde ukulele. And that's basically how this girl found me. She had like run across me at some point and then was like, oh, who is that girl, uh, girl ukulele mm, harmonies? And she found me again. So uh, it's important to have a way for people to find you again, because you might play Bonnaroo. Um, that year I ended up on a panel talking about my like first time ever at Bonnaroo with Portugal the Man, Bonnie Vare, Khaki King, and Lucinda Williams. <laughs> so, works out. <laughs> um, I played Bonnaroo the next year, but this is what I did like to fill my time between the two Bonnaroos. Um, I contacted another YouTube band named Pomplamoos and we recorded an EP together. I played uh, almost every weekend of my college career and still got good grades. Uh, I toured on the East and West Coast. I did the UK again. 
I opened for Matt and Kim at a festival. Um, I spoke on panels and played at CMJ. I put out 11 videos. I went back and counted what I did between those years. And I opened for Kevin Bacon, which was weird. Didn't know it was Kevin Bacon. They were like, you'll be opening for the Bacon Brothers. And I was like, cool. Do they sing songs about greasy food? And then I got there and it was Kevin Bacon being a little too sincere about his songs. <laughs> there was one about a squid coming out of the ocean. Um, <laughs> Bonnaroo part two. Um, this time I played like one giant show instead of like seven little ones. And this happened. That's the crowd for Weezer, for which I will be playing in front of uh, during tripping down the freeway. This was fun. Uh, yeah, we weren't in the right tuning. It was their fault. <laughs> but uh, That happened because uh, when I found out that Weezer was coming to play at Bonnaroo, I had a video of me covering one of their songs, and I tweeted it at them. And I said, hey, come play this song with me during my set. And they said, no, come play this song with us during our set. Ben Queller is also one of my favorite musicians. And he found me because I made a video with all of my fans in it where I had them lip sync to a song. And in one of the particularly awesome submissions, this huge dude with great dance moves had a Ben Queller poster in the background. And somebody must have sent it to Ben being like, hey, your fans like Julia Noons too. And he was like, oh, well, I'm going on tour. I'm going to bring her. That was 20, 24 shows. That was a lot of shows. Um, the next thing to happen was recording Settle Down. Um, I told you guys that I didn't really like the quality of that um, I wrote these album. And so I wanted to re-record some of them to like bring the caliber up. And then I had like an entire album's worth of other new songs. So that's how I ended up with an 18 song album. Um, and basically working with Zach was kind of, my producer Zach, was uh, a serendipitous meeting. I, uh, this is kind of a long story. <laughs> uh, I got approached to be in a pilot for a Fox show and they wanted me to play myself and be um, like the musician at a wedding. And the song they wanted to use, I didn't have a good recording of, but they wanted it like tomorrow. So I reached out to all of my friends to see if anyone had any recording equipment to do anything for me. And they sent me to Zach. And we did that one song together. And he said, this is fun. We should do more. And I was like, hey, how about 17 more? And um, I think that that's the kind of stuff where like, you don't really know when the person that you want to work with is going to come along, but being open to those experiences So far is I've good. made three uh, albums and I'm ready to make a new one. I have 12 new songs and I'm re-recording some old ones so that I can have more recent recordings of the way I play them now on stage. That's Zach. 
normally I would record the album and incur a fun amount of debt and then I would try to make that money back by selling the album. But now we have this awesome platform called Kickstarter and I can basically pre-sell the album and offer up a bunch of stuff that I would never sell on my regular website with the added bonus of you guys knowing exactly where your money is going. It is going directly into the studio. Then we can turn off the lights, the sun's coming up, no dreams tonight to interrupt. Turn off the alarm before it sounds. Get out of bed without putting your head down, down. Let's talk about rewards and stuff. I will be offering... So... I'm trying to make you guys think I'm really attractive, so that's why I stopped it there. Um, sorry I didn't introduce this video. This is my first PowerPoint. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> this is, oh thank you. Um, this is the Kickstarter video that I made to fund that 18 song album. And um, I think Kickstarter is a really important thing to talk about because there are two ways to use it. Um, you can use it like a fundraiser where you just ask for people's money, or you can use it more like a bake sale where you offer them things, metaphorical cookies for their money. And that's how I did it. And I think that my approach to it in offering things that I would want from my favorite musician is why I ended up making 78 thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars no don't play yet um and the story about me became not only like oh she does youtube videos she's toured with ben folds and blah 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 but also that my fans love me so friggin much that they gave me like eighty thousand dollars like that became a thing that people talked about and I think, I honestly think that because of Kickstarter and the story that happened because of it, um, I think that's why Conan noticed me. And with my album coming out in February, they asked me to play Conan O'Brien right before the release of the album. Oh, is it gonna play? Play. Play, play. Yes. Nope. <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey! Guess what? I'm gonna play Stay Awake on Conan O'Brien. <laughs> January 24th. <laughs> we can turn off the lights, the sun's coming up, no dreams tonight. Conan. Get out of bed without putting your head down, 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 down. Yeah, that was important to show you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that performance on Conan kind of exposed me to like a very different group of people. Um, I'm super used to like performing in front of a group of like 50 kids that like really really love me and Performing on Conan for like just his audience of 500 people who have no idea who I am and then the millions that watched it that night um, So like compared to the ukulele luau <laughs> More fair to say that my life changed a whole bunch and I would never would have guessed that it would have all come out of just obsessing over ukulele videos on YouTube four years prior. Most importantly, somewhere along the line, I realized that I get too sweaty to have bangs. <laughs> and that's what I would like to leave you with. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm gonna be signing stuff downstairs after Matt's presentation during the half hour break. Say that one more time. I couldn't hear it. I'm going to be... You're going to be signing... Things. Things. After Matt's talk. After Matt's talk. During the half hour break.
During the half hour break. Thank you, Julia. Thank you.